today we are going to talk a little bit about counting and how counting plays a role in a lot of things we do and observe. So when we were little children, you know, one of the first things we learn is how to count. So for example, you know, if you are going to be a preschool as a little kid, one of the things you will learn is to how to count little blocks or little balls or whatever. But the counting becomes a big challenge as you become older and looking at different issues and problems. And even they make headline news if that is a bigger issue related to some particular incident. For example, in year 2000, counting was a big issue. And it was in the newspapers all over the world. Why was that? It was because of the US presidential election. One didn't know who won the election because there was a counting problem. There was a counting challenge. And it became a news in every country. And again, you know, if you think about uh, going to a big concert, for example, let us say a famous musician is performing and there was a big concert. And the next day in the newspaper, you will read an article that might say there were so many people at the concert. So how did this guy count all these people who were there? You were there in the concert and you didn't know how to count. Okay? Or maybe recently, you know, you would have seen in the newspapers or in the media about what's known as the the Arab Spring, where there were marches and protests in different parts of the country in the Middle East, like Egypt, for example. So when you look at the picture in the newspaper, you will see there were a lot of people in downtown Cairo. Then the article might say there were estimated this many people at the square. Now how did they count it? Okay, so that's the big problem. And again, you can relate this to the population of a country. So how do people know what's the population of a country? So let us say, for the sake of argument, uh, a country called Butchland. So you want to find the population of this country. So what do you do? The normal thing to do is what is known as a census. So essentially what that means is, you know, the people in every household are going to get a, a small form to fill in and to say how many people are living in that household. And based on that, the officials in Butchland will be able to determine how many people are living in that country at that point in time. Okay? Again, this may not be the right kind of number you will get because some of the households may not return the forms. And some of the forms may be lost or whatever. So in any case, you get some kind of estimate that could be a better estimate than anything you can do. So let us say in Butchland, they did a census in year 2000. And when they did the census, uh, they, let us say, you know, that may be the Butchland, for example. And when they did the census, they found out there were 5.6 million people in that country at the time, near 2000. Now the question is, you want to determine the population in 2015. So what's the population in 2015 of Butchland? One other thing you can do is, in 2015, you can again do census and determine what the population is. But that's going to cost a lot of money and a lot of work. So can we do something different that is based on the population of year 2000 that we have? And if we can determine what's the, let us say, the natural growth rate of this country and also what's the 
migration rate, then can we use this information along with the census in year 2000 to determine the population in 2050? So that's what we are trying to do. So how do you determine the national growth rate? So there are two parts to the national growth rate. There's going to be the, the newborns, so the new babies who are being born in the country. So if you go to the hospitals in the country, they are going to have a record of that. So you, are, you will know how many newborns were in a particular year. And then the other component there will be the deaths. So again, based on how many death certificates were issued in that country, you will know how many people have died. Okay? So if you combine these two things, that's going to give you what's the natural growth rate for that country in a particular year. In a similar fashion, you can look at the migration rate. And the migration rate is going to be based on how many people are leaving the country as compared to how many people are entering the country. So if there are more people entering the country, then there's going to be a net increase in the population. On the other hand, if more people are leaving the country, there will be a net decrease inside the country. Okay? So the question is, can we use this information along with the census in year 2000 to determine what's the population in 2015? So to start the exercise, <clears throat> let us say our natural growth rate is 1.5%. And for the first part of this exercise, I'm going to assume the migration rate is zero. What that means is there are people leaving and coming into the country, but they are kind of balanced. So there's no net increase in the population because of the migration. So if you make those two assumptions, then we could write down a relationship. So the relationship is going to look like this. So we can say the population 2001 will be equal to the population in 2000. Then it's going to be plus growth in population. And this, this is due to natural growth rate, then plus increase due to migration. So for this example, what, we, what do we have? So population in 2000, that's the one, 5.6 million. And the growth in population, and that's based on the natural growth rate. And if you remember, we said the growth rate is 1.5%. So if you convert that into decimals, that is 0 0.015. So the growth in population is going to be 0 0.015 times 5.6. That was the population you started with. Because when we say 1.5%, that's a 1.5% of that 5.6 million. So the growth in population is going to be that. Then we said the migration rate for this particular problem was equal to zero. That means increase due to migration is going to be zero. So that's what you have. So that's the relationship. So now if we take all the words out and write down the numbers, what you have is the population in 2001. So I use the notation P for population and the subscript 2001 to show that's the population in 2001 will be equal to, from what we had before, 5.6 plus 0 0.015 times 5.6. Now that's the same as 5.6 times 1 plus 0 0.015. Okay, we are taking 5.6 as a common factor.
So if we rewrite this one more time, that's going to be 5.6 times 1.015. So that will be the population in 2001. So we are multiplying 5.6 by a number that is greater than 1. So what that means is in 2001, the population will be a little bit more than 5.6 million. Now, what will be the population in year 2002? So, year 2002, the population is going to be the population in year 2001 plus, like what we did before, is going to be 0 0.015 times, what do we have here? Here we had 5.6 because we had 5.6 because that was the population in year 2001. So what we have here should be the population in year 2001. So that's the same as population in year 2001 times 1.015. Now population in year 2001, we know that. And that is 5.6 times 1.015. So if you put that in here, that's going to be 5.6 times. There's a 1.015. There's another 1.015. It's going to be 1.015 squared. OK? So now we can see a pattern. The population in year 2001 is 5.6 times 1.015 to the power 1. And the population in year 2002, look at the 2 there, is 5.6 times 1.015 to the power 2. So now, if I come and ask you, what will be the population in year 2003? What will that be? If you see the pattern, you can say it's going to be 5.6 times 1.015 cubed. So if you go along this pattern, you could say the population in year 2010 will be 5.6 times 1.015 to the 10. Or you can continue further and say the population in year 2015. See, that's the, the question we asked at the beginning. is going to be equal to 5.6 times 1.015 to the 15. So we have an estimate for the population in year 2015 even before 2015 came along, right? We don't have to do any census. All we need to do is to determine what is the annual growth rate and what's the annual migration rate, okay?